Hee Haw. Hee Haw is an American television variety show featuring country music and humor with the fictional rural Cornfield County as a backdrop. It aired first run on CBS from 1969 to 1971, in syndication from 1971 to 1993, and on TNN from 1996 to 1997. RFD TV began airing reruns in 2008, where it currently remains. The show was inspired by Rowan and Martin's Laugh In, the major difference being that Hee Haw was far less topical, and was centered on country music and rural culture. Hosted by country music artists Buck Owens and Roy Clark for most of its run, the show was equally well known for its voluptuous, scantily clad women in stereotypical farmer's daughter outfits and country style mini dresses, a group that came to be known as the Hee Haw Honeys, and its corn pone humor. Hee Haw's appeal, however, was not limited to a rural audience. It was successful in all of the major markets, including New York, Los Angeles, Boston, and Chicago. Other niche programs such as The Lawrence Welk Show, which targeted older audiences, and Soul Train, which targeted black audiences also rose to prominence in syndication during the era. Like Lafayette, the show minimized production costs by taping all of the recurring sketches for a season in batches, setting up for the cornfield one day the joke fence on another day, etc. At the height of its popularity, an entire season's worth of shows would be taped in two separate week-long sessions, then individual shows were assembled from edited sections. Only musical performances were taped with a live audience, a laugh track was added to all other segments. The series was taped for the CBS television network at its station affiliate Black TV, now WTVF, in downtown Nashville and later at Opryland USA in the Donaldson area of Nashville. The show was produced by Yonge Street Productions through the mid-1980s. It was later produced by Gaylord Entertainment, which distributed the show in syndication. The show's name was coined by show business talent manager and producer Bernie Brillstein and derives from a common English onomatopoeia used to describe the braying sound that a donkey makes. After 25 seasons, the series initially ended its run in June 1993 where it was soon picked up by TNN for reruns. TNN would eventually order an additional season of first-run episodes, beginning November 23, 1996. The show ultimately ended for good on December 27, 1997. Hee Haw's creators, Frank Pepiot and John Ellsworth, were both Canadian-born writers who had extensive experience in writing for variety shows. Inspired by the massive success of rural sitcoms of the 1960s, especially on CBS, Pepiot and Islesworth sought to capitalize on that by creating a variety show that catered to the same audience, this despite neither one having a firm grasp on rural comedy. Its two hosts represented both sides in a divide in country-slash-western music at the time, Buck Owens was the prominent architect of the California-based Bakersfield Sound and one of the biggest country hitmakers of the 1960s. Roy Clark who had worked in Washington, D.C., and Las Vegas, was a stalwart of Nashville's music row known for his skill at mixing music and comedy on stage. Pepiot and Islesworth brought on two fellow Canadian writers with more experience in rural humor, Gordy Tapp and Don Heron, who appeared in the recurring role of Charlie Farquharson, the rural anchorman for station KORN. The producers also scored a country comedy expert familiar to rural audiences in Archie Campbell, who co-starred and wrote much of the jokes and skits along with Tap, George Yannick and comedian Jack Burns in the first season. Hee Haw premiered on CBS as a summer 1969 replacement for the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Though the show had respectable ratings, it sat at number 16 for the 1970-71 season. It was dropped in July 1971 by CBS as part of the so-called Rural Purge, along with fellow country-themed shows The Beverly Hillbillies, Mayberry RFD, and Green Acres. The success of Hee Haw and other country-themed shows was the source of a heated dispute in Pps corporate offices, Michael Dan, although he personally disliked the shows, considered total viewership the benchmark of success and encouraged the shows to stay on the air, while Fred Silverman believed certain demographics, the ones in which Hee Haw and the others performed poorly, could draw more advertising dollars. Silverman's view won out, and CBS cancelled the rural shows in summer 1971. Undaunted the producers put together a syndication deal for the show, which continued in roughly the same format for the rest of its run. Pepiot and Islesworth's company, Young Street Productions, named for Young Street, a prominent thoroughfare in their home city of Toronto, maintained ownership of the series. During the show's peak in popularity, 
He Haw often competed in syndication against The Lawrence Welk Show, a long-running ABC program which had also been cancelled in 1971, also in an attempt to purge the networks of older demographic-leaning programs. Like He Haw, Lawrence Welk was picked up for syndication in the fall of 1971, and there were some markets where the same station aired both programs. The success of Hee Haw and Lawrence Welk in syndication, and the network decisions that led to their respective cancellations, were the inspiration for a novelty song called the Lawrence Welk Hee Haw Counter-Revolution Polka, performed by Clark. The song became a top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot Country Singles chart in the fall of 1972. Welk and Hee Haw also competed against another music-oriented niche program that moved to syndication in 1971, Soul Train, a black-oriented program originally a local program based in Chicago, that also went on to a very long run in syndication. Mirroring the long downward trend in the popularity of variety shows in general that had taken place in the 1970s, ratings began to decline for Hee Haw around 1986. That year, Owens departed as host, and Young as Street sold the show to Gaylord Entertainment, best known for the Grand Ole Opry and its related businesses. Clark continued to host the show with a celebrity guest each week. The ratings decline continued into the early 1990s, and in the fall of 1991, in an attempt to win back viewers and attract a younger audience, the show's format and setting underwent a dramatic overhaul. The changes included a new title, The Hee Haw Show, more pop oriented country music, and the barnyard cornfield setting replaced by a city street and shopping mall set. The first of the new shows aired in January 1992. Despite the attempt to keep the show fresh, the changes alienated many of its longtime viewers while failing to gain the hope for younger viewers, and the ratings continued their decline. During the summer of 1992, a decision was made to end first run production, and instead air highlights of the show's earlier years in a revamped program called Hee Haw Silver, as part of celebrating the show's 25th season. Under the new format, Clark hosted a mixture of classic clips and new footage. The Hee Haw Silver episodes spotlighted many of their classic sketches and musical performances from the show, with a series of retrospective looks at performers who had since died, such as David String Bean Aikman, Archie Campbell, Junior Samples, and Kenny Price. According to the show's producer, Sam Lovelo, the ratings showed improvement with these classic reruns, however, the series was finally cancelled in June 1993 at the conclusion of its 25th season. Hee Haw continued to pop up in reruns, see below for details, throughout the 1990s and later during the following decade, in a series of successful releases from Time Life. After the show's syndication run ended, reruns aired on the Nashville network from 1993 until 1996. Upon the cancellation of reruns in 1996 the program resurfaced, for another first-run season, ultimately concluding the series in 1997. Its 22 years in TV syndication, 1971-93 was the record for the longest-running U.S. syndicated TV program, until Soul Train surpassed it in 1993, Hee Haw remains the fifth longest-running syndicated American TV program, though the longest-running of its genre. The current record is Entertainment Tonight, which has been on the air for years. During the 2006-07 season CMT aired a series of reruns and TV Land also recognized the series with an award presented by K.D. Lang, in attendance were Roy Clark, Ganilla Hutton, Barbie Benton, The Hager Twins, Linda Thompson, Misty Rowe, and others. It was during this point, roughly between the years of 2004 and 2007, that Time Life began selling selected episodes of the show on DVD among the DVD content offered was the 1978 10th anniversary special that hadn't been seen since its original airing. CMT sporadically aired the series, usually in graveyard slots, and primarily held the rights in order to be able to air the musical performances as part of their music video library, such as during the Pure Vintage block on CMT Pure Country. Reruns of Hee Haw began airing on RFD TV in September 2008 where it currently remains, anchoring the network's Sunday night lineup, although beginning in January 2014 an episode airs on Saturday afternoon and the same episode is rerun the following Sunday night. In 2011, the network began re-airing the earliest episodes from 1969-70 on Thursday evenings. That summer, many of the surviving cast members, along with a number of country artists who were guest stars on the show, taped a country's family reunion special, entitled Salute to the Cornfield which aired on RFD TV in January 2012. The special is also part of Country's Family Reunions DVD series. 
Concurrent with the special was the unveiling of a hee-haw exhibit, titled Picking and Grinning, at the Oklahoma History Center in Oklahoma City. As part of the promotions for its DVD products, Time Life also compiles and syndicates a half-hour clip show series, The Hee Haw Collection. Two rural-style comedians, already well-known in their native Canada, gained their first major U.S. exposure, Gordy Tapp and Don Heron, whose corn radio character, newscaster Charlie Farquhar Harson, had been a fixture of Canadian television since 1952 and later appeared on The Red Green Show. Other cast members over the years included, but were not limited to Roy Acuff, Kathy Baker, as the show's MC, Billy Jim Baker, Barbie Benton, Kelly Billingsley, Vicki Bird, Jennifer Bishop, Archie Campbell, Phil Campbell, Harry Cole, Weeping Willie, Mackenzie Colt, John Henry Falk, Tennessee Ernie Ford, Marianne Gordon, Rogers, Jim and John Hager, Victoria Hallman, Diana Goodman, Gunilla Hutton, Linda Johnson, Grandpa Jones, Zella Lair, The Unicycle Girl, George Lindsay, reprising his Goober character from The Andy Griffith Show, Jimmy Little, Aerlene Mandrell, Charlie McCoy, Don McKinley, Patricia McKinnon, Sherry Miles, Reverend Grady Nutt, Minnie Pearl, Claw Jackie Phelps, Slim Pickens, Kenny Price, and Randall, Chase Randolph, Susan Ray, Jimmy Riddle, Janine Riley, Alice Ripley, Lulu Roman, Misty Rowe, Junior Samples, Ray Sanders, Terry Sanders, Gaylord Sartain, Diana Scott, Shotgun Reed, Gerald Smith, The Georgie Quacker, Jeff Smith, Donna Stokes, Dennis Stone, Ronnie Stoneman, Mary Taylor, Nancy Taylor, Linda Thompson, Lisa Todd, Pedro Thomas, Nancy Trailer, Buck Trent, Jackie Waddell, Pat Waddell, and Jonathan Winters, among many others. The Buckaroos, Buck Owens Band, initially served as the house band on the show and consisted of members Don Rich, Jim Shaw, Jerry Brightman, Jerry Wiggins, Rick Taylor, Doyle Singer, Doyle Kurtzinger, Don Lee, Ronnie Jackson, Terry Christopherson, Doyle Holly, and in later seasons fiddle player Janet Jay, and Victoria Hallman who replaced Don Rich on harmony vocals, Rich was killed in a motorcycle accident in 1974. In later seasons, the show hired Nashville musicians to serve as the show's house band. George Ritchie was the first music director. When he left to marry Tammy Wynette, harmonica player Charlie McCoy, already a member of the band when he wasn't playing on recording sessions, and became the show's music director, forming the Hee Haw Band, which became the house band for the remainder of the series run. The Nashville edition, a four-member, two-male, two-female, singing group, served as the background singers for most of the musical performances. Some of the cast members made national headlines. Lulu Roman was twice charged with drug possession in 1971. David Stringbean Aikman and his wife were murdered in November 1973 during a robbery at their home. And as mentioned above, Buck Owens lead guitarist and harmony singer Don Rich of the Buckaroos was killed in a motorcycle crash in 1974. Some cast members, such as Charlie McCoy and Tennessee Ernie Ford, originally appeared on the show as guest stars, while Barbie Benton was the only known former cast member to return in later seasons only as a guest star. After Buck Owens left the show, a different country music artist would accompany Roy Clark as a guest co-host each week, who would give the episode's opening performance, participate with Clark in the picking and grin and sketch, and assist Clark in introducing the other guest stars' performances. The show's final season. He Haw Silver, was hosted by Clark alone. Some of the most popular sketches and segments on He Haw included, but were not limited to. Guest stars often participated in some of the sketches, mostly the PFFT. You is gone in the cornfield sketches, however, this did not occur until latter seasons. He Haw featured a premiere showcase on commercial television throughout its run for country, bluegrass, gospel, and other styles of American traditional music featuring hundreds of elite musical performances that were paramount to the success, popularity and legacy of the series for a broad audience of Southern, rural and purely music fans alike. Although country music was the primary genre of music featured on the show, guest stars and cast members alike also performed music from other genres, such as oldies, big band, and pop standards. Some of the music-based segments on the show, other than guest stars' performances, included Lovelo also has made the claim the show presented what were, in reality, the first musical videos. 
Lovelo said his videos were conceptualized by having show staff go to nearby rural areas and film animals and farmers, before editing the footage to fit the storyline of a particular song. The video material was a very workable production item for the show, he wrote. It provided picture stories for songs. However, some of our guests felt the videos took attention away from their live performances, which they hoped would promote record sales. If they had a hit song, they didn't want to play it under comic barnyard footage. The concept's mixed reaction eventually spelled an end to the video concept in Hee Haw. However, several of co host Owen's songs, including Tall, Dark Stranger, Big in Vegas, and I Wouldn't Live in New York City, if they gave me the whole dang town, aired on the series and have since aired on Great American Country and CMT as part of their classic country music programming blocks. Hee Haw featured at least two, and sometimes three or four, guest celebrities each week. While most of the guest stars were country music artists, a wide range of other famous luminaries were featured from actors and actresses to sports stars to politicians. Sheb Woolley, one of the original cast members, wrote the show's theme song. After filming the initial 13 episodes, other professional demands caused him to leave the show, but he returned from time to time as a guest. Loretta Lynn was the first guest star of Hee Haw and made more guest appearances, 24, than any other artist. She also co-hosted the show more than any other guest co-host and therefore appears on more of the DVD releases for retail sale than any other guest star. Tammy Wynette was second with 21 guest appearances. Tammy Wynette married George Ritchie, the musical director for Hee Haw from 1970 to 1977, in 1978. From 1990-92, country megastar Garth Brooks appeared on the show four times. In 1992, Producer Sam Lovelo tried unsuccessfully to contact Brooks because he wanted him for the final show. Brooks then surprised Lovelo by showing up at the last minute, ready to don his overalls and perform for the final episode. A barn interior set was used as the main stage for most of the musical performances from the show's premiere until the debut of the Hee Haw Honky Tonk sketch in the early 1980s. Afterwards, the Hee Haw Honky Tonk set would serve as the main stage for the remainder of the series run. Buck Owens then began using the barn interior set for his performances after it was replaced by the Hee Haw Honky Tonk set and was named Buck's Place, as a nod to one of Owens' hits, Sam's Place. Other settings for the musical performances throughout the series run included a haystack, where the entire cast performed songs, the living room of a Victorian house, the front porch and lawn of the Samuel B. Stern Wheeler home, a grist mill, where Roy Clark performed many of his songs in earlier seasons, and a railroad depot, where Buck Owens performed his songs before acquiring Buck's place. Elvis Presley was a fan of Hee Haw and wanted to appear as a guest on the program, but Presley was afraid that his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, would not allow him to do so. Two of the Hee Haw honeys dated Presley long before they joined the cast, Linda Thompson in the mid-1970s, whom Presley had a long-term relationship with after his divorce from Priscilla and Diana Goodman shortly afterward stopped shortly after Presley's death, his father, Vernon Presley, made a cameo appearance on the show, alongside Thompson and Buck Owens, and paid tribute to his late son, noting how much Elvis enjoyed watching the show, and introduced one of his favorite gospel songs, as performed by the Hee Haw Gospel Quartet. Hee Haw produced a short-lived spin-off series, Hee Haw Honeys, not to be confused with Hee Haw's female cast members for the 1978-79 television seasons. This musical sitcom starred Kathy Lee Johnson, Gifford, along with Hee Haw regulars Misty Rowe, Gaylord Sartain, Lulu Roman, and Kenny Price as a family who owned a truck stop restaurant, likely inspired by the Lulu's truck stop sketch on Hee Haw. Their restaurant included a bandstand, where guest country artists would perform a couple of their hits of the day sometimes asking the cast to join them. Cast members would also perform songs occasionally, and the Nashville edition, He Haw's backup singing group, frequently appeared on the show, portraying regular patrons of the restaurant. Notable guest stars on Honey's included, but were not limited to, Loretta Lynn, the Oak Ridge Boys, Larry Gatlin, Dave, and Sugar, and the Kentels. The He Haw Theater opened in Branson, Missouri, in 1981 and operated through 1983. It featured live shows using the cast of the television series, as well as guests and other talent. The format was similar with a country variety show type family theme. Charlton Comics also published humor comics based on Hee Haw. They were drawn by Frank Herbert. When Hee Haw went into syndication, its normal time slot was on Saturday night in the pre-prime time hour, 7 p.m. ET.
Hee Haw continues to remain popular with its longtime fans and those who have discovered the program through DVD releases or its reruns on RFDTV. In spite of the popularity among its fans, the program has never been a favorite of television critics or reviewers. The Hee Haw Honey's spin off, in particular, was cited in a 2002 TV Guide article as one of the 10 worst television series ever. On at least four episodes of the animated Fox series Family Guy, when the storyline hits a dead end, a cutaway to Conway Twitty performing a song is inserted. The handoff is done in hee haw style, and often uses actual footage of Twitty performing on the show. Lulu Roman released a new album titled At Last on January 15, 2013. The album features Lulu's versions of 12 classics and standards, including guest appearance Speed Dolly Parton, T. Graham Brown, Linda Davis, and Georgette Jones, daughter of George Jones and Tammy Wynette. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.